The Apple iPhone 16 series is coming with some big changes to its predecessor, and we've also got details of some exciting new upgrades in the pipeline. Before we get started though, let me know in the comments who out there is waiting for the iPhone 16, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech. So first up, we've got a report that Apple is working on under-display camera technology to deliver the first iPhone with a true full-screen display. Now, the bezels have already become incredibly thin on the iPhones, and according to a new report from the ELEC, the suppliers have already commenced the development of under-panel camera technology for the iPhone, and it's going to be used for both the Face ID sensor as well as the selfie camera. Now, while we've already got some phones out there in the market already with this technology, the photo quality is poor, and it's not something that Apple would deliver on one of their devices. But according to the ELEC reports though, this is going to be arriving in about 2026. On top of that, we've got news of upgrades to the telephoto camera, and it's not only going to see an upgrade to a 48 megapixel sensor, but it's also going to be getting 10 times optical zoom. Now, the upgrades are reportedly being optimized for the Apple Vision Pro for better interaction between the headset and the iPhone, but we're going to have to wait and see what Apple have in store here. Now, next up, we've got news of a new design for the iPhone 16 and one with a new camera layout similar to the iPhone 10. Now, Mac rumors have obtained pre-production units of the iPhone 16, which show a difference to this year's iPhones in terms of the cameras, and they've actually shared three different versions. Now, these are renders based on what they've seen, but you can see that they still have the dual camera setup, but in all three pre-production units, the lenses are in a vertical layout, and on the far left, we've got a joint module to keep them together. Now, personally, I see this as changing things for the sake of change, and I think it actually looks better how they are now on the iPhone 15, but it's important to note that these are pre-production units, so it doesn't necessarily mean that any of them are going to make the final cut. Now, next up, we've got more news on the new capture button for the iPhone 16, thanks to Mark Gurman in his latest Power On newsletter. Now, the capture button is going to be placed over on the right-hand side of the phone, and it's replacing where the current millimeter wave antenna is for the USA models, and as its name suggests, it's going to be there for the camera. Now, the new button also won't be a physical button, and it's a capacitive touch button with haptic feedback, and it's also coming with a force sensor to recognize different pressure. Now, there's going to be different functions like a light press, a hard press, and a long hold, and it's going to be for things like opening the camera app or taking a photo or video. Now, we previously had many reports of Apple working on touch capacitive buttons, so it's likely that this button is the cause for all of that confusion in the past. Now, next up, we've got news that the iPhone 16 Pro models are going to be getting a new OLED material set from Samsung Displays, and it's one that's been specifically designed for Apple. Now, the previous iPhones use the M12 OLED set, but the new M14 set being designed for the iPhones has reportedly got a big focus on the panel's efficiency, and this is going to further aid better battery life on the iPhones. Now, we're also getting larger displays, with the Pro models now coming in at 6.3 inches and 6.9 inches, but we're unsure at the moment if these changes are also going to be passed down to the non-Pro models. Now, as we know, Apple are working hard on bringing more AI features to the iPhone, and especially AI that's handled on the device itself. And Ming-Chi Kuo has now advised that for the iPhone 16, we're going to be getting an upgraded microphone for better voice and speech recognition to further aid the AI performance. Now, for those of you excited for the Apple iPhone 16 series, we're now going to run through the full specs, design, and the pricing for each model in the range to help you guys decide which one is right for you. For my regular viewers, you guys have seen this, so just skip to the next video. But if you're new here, then hit subscribe now and we'll get right into it. So first up, we have the standard iPhone 16. And with the standard iPhone 16, we get a 6.3 inch OLED display, but unfortunately, this is still gonna be an LTPS display. The iPhone 16 is gonna have a taller aspect ratio than last year, and it's gonna be protected by Ceramic Shield 2. We get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie camera and Face ID sensors. And then on the rear, we've got a 12 megapixel primary camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's powered by the A18 chipset, and it's likely coming with 6 gigabytes of RAM and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. It's also powered up by a 3450 milliamp hour battery with 30 watt fast charging, and it's gonna come with advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7. Now, it will, of course, ship with iOS 18 and is expected to launch from around $850 in September 2024. Now, next up, we've got the iPhone 16 Plus. 
In the iPhone 16 Plus, we get a 6.9 inch OLED display. And again, unfortunately, this is another LTPS display. It's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor and is protected by Ceramic Shield 2. We get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie cameras and Face ID sensors. Then on the rear, we've got a 12 megapixel primary camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's powered by the A18 chipset and it's likely going to come with a choice of 6 gigabytes of RAM and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. It's powered by a 4420 milliamp hour battery with 30 watt fast charging and it comes with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 7. Now it of course it ships with iOS 18 and it's expected to launch from around $950 in September 24. Next up, we've got the iPhone 16 Pro. Now the iPhone 16 Pro has a 6.3 inch 120 Hz LTPO OLED display. It's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor and the Pro is protected by Ceramic Shield 3. We get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie camera and Face ID sensors. Then on the rear, we get a 48 megapixel primary camera, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, and then we've got a 12 megapixel Tetra Prism camera with 5x optical zoom. It's powered up by the A18 Pro chipset and it comes with 8GB of RAM and up to 1TB of storage. And it's also powered up by a 3450mAh battery and fast charging is still unknown at the moment, but we do expect some improvements. And of course, it comes with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 7. It will of course ship with iOS 18 and is expected to launch from around $1,100 in September 2024. Now finally, we save the best to last, the iPhone 16 Pro Max. With the iPhone 16 Pro Max, we get a 6.9 inch 120Hz LTPO OLED display. Again, like the other phones, it's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor and it's protected by Ceramic Shield 3. We get the Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie cameras and Face ID sensors. And then on the rear, we've got a 48 megapixel primary camera, a 48 megapixel ultra wide, and a 12 megapixel Tetra Prism camera with 5x optical zoom. It's powered up by the A18 Pro chipset. It comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and up to 1 terabyte of storage. And it's powered up by a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. As with the 16 Pro, we don't know the fast charging at the moment, but we do expect to see some improvements. Now it comes up with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 7. And it will of course ship with iOS 18. And this one's expected to launch around $1,300 in September 24. So overall, the iPhone 16 series is looking like a great addition to the iPhone lineup. While things that remain similar, there are still plenty of upgrades. With the new hardware to power it, better and brighter displays along with the new battery thermal technology, this should really enhance the experience and work well with the new AI features. Now, of course, because of all the similarities to its predecessor, it's probably not going to make anyone with an iPhone 15 rush for an upgrade. But for anyone with an older iPhone or looking to get their first iPhone, then it's going to be a great choice. Now, of course, as we approach the launch, more and more information is going to continue to come in and I'll be sharing it as soon as it does. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing in the future.